up everyone? So I'm on my way to do a leg workout at Gold's Gym in Tampa. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up all the clips from the calf training I do at the beginning of the session and I'm gonna get into the science of all of that in the voiceover. Uh, so I'll check in with you guys when I'm in the gym. I think there's a good angle here. Okay, well, welcome to the informative voiceover, everyone. So the first question I'd like to look into is whether or not calf development is more genetically predetermined or whether or not calves are more stubborn than other muscles. And while I'm not aware of any direct research looking at this question, I think we might infer that the calves are a bit more stubborn simply because they're being exercised pretty much any time you move around uh, by running, walking, uh, or even just standing still. And so I think it stands to reason that the calves might be a bit more resistant to the so-called newbie effect than other muscles simply because they're already sort of trained from the age that you start standing up. So when you actually do start training them, you don't see as much of an effect. Uh, this of course isn't true stubbornness, it just implies implies that they might already be closer to their genetic growth potential at the time that you start properly training them. Perhaps more importantly, in my eyes, is the contribution of one's skeleton on the muscle's architecture and subsequent appearance. For example, someone with small ankles and high inserting calves will probably always have smaller looking calves than someone with thicker ankles and low inserting calves. Uh, but that isn't to say that the former person isn't able to get them to grow. It just means that the end result will be relative to their starting place, which is true of every muscle and not unique to the calves. So another consideration would be muscle fiber composition. And we know that the soleus muscle, which lies underneath, but is actually bigger in cross-sectional area than the gastrocnemius, shows a very high proportion of type one or slow twitch muscle fiber, with estimates ranging between 70 and 96%. And since slow twitch fibers have been repeatedly shown to be less hypertrophic and response to at least a high intensity training regime. Uh, it stands to reason that this could be at least in part responsible for the seeming stubbornness of the calves as a whole. Uh, but of course, this only speaks to the soleus muscle, not the gastroc. It also isn't to say that there isn't a potential way around this so-called fiber type problem, which I'll get to. And then lastly on this question, I've heard some experts in the field speculate that androgen receptor density is lower in the calves. And there is some research to support this notion as well, uh, which might explain why the calves seem to be more resistant to growth acutely than other muscles, but given enough time, will grow nonetheless. All right, so to get into the actual workout, uh, I kick things off with five to 10 minutes on the Stairmaster. And this is something I do before every training session, uh, but I believe it to be especially important in the case of calf training so that the muscles have you know, an adequate blood flow with sufficiently warm and lax joints, but mostly because a mind-muscle connection with the calves can be more difficult to establish for a lot of people. Performing what would be in essence a couple of hundred reps of body weight plantar flexion can function as a sort of pre-activation technique for the calves. So the first exercise was the single leg standing calf raise, and there are a few things I want to note here. The first is that I do these single-legged because I do have a slight right to left imbalance where my right is a bit bigger than my left, and if I do them bilaterally, or both legs at the same time, my right tends to take over. And so doing them one leg at a time basically forces each leg to fire individually and equally. And this was my main heavy movement. So I loaded these in the six to eight rep range, took each set quite close to failure. The purpose here is to sort of fully activate the fast twitch fibers and the slow twitch fibers of both the gastroc and the soleus. And what I really wanna focus on here is the rep tempo. Uh, so you want to aim for a two to three second negative with a slight pause at the bottom and then a one second positive with a slight squeeze at the top. Uh, so written in official tempo notation, it would look like this. And the reason for this is that if you're allowing yourself to bounce out of the bottom of a calf raise, your actual calf muscles are doing very little of the work because your elastic tissues are doing the brunt of it. Pausing for a second or two at the bottom of each rep allows the potentially stored elastic energy to dissipate so that the muscles are made more responsible for overcoming the application of load. And speaking of which, you'll notice I am using a plate to load held in my hand. And this is mostly because this gym just didn't have a proper standing calf raise machine. But either variant works virtually the same. One advantage of performing these with free weights like this is that you can lean slightly more forward or backward throughout the range of motion and find a posture that allows you to sort of feel your calves firing the best, or at least what feels most comfortable, rather than being locked into a machine, which can sort of restrict you to a strict up and down motion, which can be uncomfortable comfortable or feel unnatural. And also because the top of my shoes can sometimes restrict my plantar flexion range of motion, I'll do these barefoot 
often. Okay, so the second exercise was a horizontal leg press calf jump. And if anyone has ever tried this exercise, I'd love to hear from you. But as far as I know, this is an invention of mine that borrows from the calf jump exercise, which I first heard of from Menno Henselmans. And the idea here is to mimic a jumping movement pattern where you bend the knees slightly as well as the hips and pretend as if you were just jumping up against the seat. From what I understand, the purpose here is twofold. First, you improve the resistance curve by accelerating out of the bottom with max speed, which acts to sort of offset the fact that the strength curve of the calves decreases or levels off throughout the concentric contraction. Uh, so basically the explosive force that you generate out of the bottom carries over to the top end of the range where the calves are weaker. It also tends to just be a more natural movement pattern for the same reason that the calf raise machine tends to be more awkward, it sort of gets you out of that unnatural straight up and down motion that these machines tend to generate. And the reason that I do these on this machine rather than the traditional calf raise machine is because I find it loads my spine less, which I believe to be injury preventative or in my case, rehabilitative. So the third exercise was the donkey calf raise. The main rationale for this movement is activation based, a 2000 book by Bohek, Berhens, and Buskies investigating relative EMG activity for a variety of calf movements found the donkey calf raise to come out on top. And this might warrant doing them first and with the greatest intensity. However, unless you have someone to sit on your back uh, or a machine to load it, they can be practically difficult to load heavily in my experience. And so I prefer to just have a plate placed on my lower back and do these with higher reps. And again, uh, and importantly, a controlled tempo with a slight pause at the bottom. And I'll also quickly mention foot position here. So you want your feet to be pointing straight ahead as pointing them in and pointing them out have both been shown to decrease muscle activation, especially pointing them out, which according to one source can cut activation roughly in half. And finally, the last movement of this workout was a seated calf raise. And the idea here is to isolate the soleus uh, since the gastroc is much less active when the knee is bent. And the reason for this is that unlike the soleus, the gastroc crosses both the ankle joint and the knee joint. So when your knee is bent, the gastroc is shortened up at the knee and as a result can't shorten as much or in other words, contract as much at the ankle. And this is called active insufficiency. Uh, so in the gastroc's relative absence, the soleus takes the brunt of the work. And again, you'll remember from earlier that the soleus is predominantly slow twitch. While the jury is still out on whether or not type one fibers respond better to lightweights and high reps than heavyweights, I think it still seems most plausible to me. For example, this 2007 paper by Natraba et al. and this paper by Mitchell et al. both found that slow twitch fibers were more responsive to higher reps reps. But then a later 2012 paper showed them to be less responsive to high reps. Uh, but even on the face of equivocal data, I tend to prefer higher reps for the soleus, given that even in theory, since, you know, according to the size principle, slow twitch motor units are recruited first and should at the very least be active for a longer duration for sets that are higher rep. As a result, should receive higher levels of fatigue and possibly a larger hypertrophic stimulus as a result. So for this reason here, we did 15 to 20 reps. Again, Again, with that same sort of slow controlled tempo as always. All right guys, so that was my workout. Uh, I'd just like to conclude by saying that it might be smarter to break this up into two workouts. Uh, if you're hitting legs roughly twice a week, which you should be anyway, in my opinion, I think most people would benefit from splitting this workout up a little bit more. But of course that will always be specific to the individual and their sort of entire training routine. I wanted to quickly welcome any new subscribers to the channel. Uh, there's been a uptick in subscriptions lately. Uh, so welcome to everyone who's new. And I am going to be doing a chest science explained video in the very near future, so you can stay tuned for that. All right, what's up everyone? Uh, so we just finished up with the leg workout. I hope that you enjoyed the calf training clips. Hopefully it was informative. If you guys liked the video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. It's actually very helpful to me. Uh, I always appreciate that. If you want more videos like this, a way to guarantee that you can see them is by clicking right here. You'll subscribe to the channel. Comment below if you have any questions for me uh, or comments for me. I'm always happy to read all of them. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm riding up uptown.